knows. Mariella and I left home late last night. Arrived here at about 10 p.m. to a campsite in uh, the White Mountain National Park. Uh, we've never actually been here, so we're really excited. Um, it's fantastic looking habitat. We're expecting to get lots of cool new reptiles and stuff. We'll be just better show you what we're driving through, spotting stuff now. And um, we'll catch you a bit later on when we find something, hopefully. So we continue to drive throughout the park just to explore which tracks we might spotlight throughout the night. As you can see, that's mainly um, savannah open eucalypt woodland, but you pass through all sorts of sandstone escarpments and thin scrubby areas, spinifex grass. This is a little period where we put the drone up just to get a bit of an aerial feel, but heaps of different biomes of habitats and things throughout the park. It is a 108,000 hectares so it's uh, got some pretty vast tracks this big uh, eroded area we decided uh, to take a bit of a look here put the drone up and discovered that there's this beautiful rock escarpment with all these eroded boulders falling down the hill all right so this is the edge of that beautiful sandstone escarpment thousands of years worth of erosion lots of nooks and crannies for things to hide so we had a little bit of explore get a feel for the park and you know there was this massive overhang above us so we thought okay well we'll scale up there get to high ground and get a bit of a feel for our surroundings and as you'll see in a moment there was just a terrific view out to the east back towards Pentland with uh, Torrance Creek behind us and the Torrance River system uh, cascading through Poison Valley this is uh, me now directing you back towards Pentland and it really was a beautiful landscape and uh, so much to see. So we decided to spend the rest of the day just doing reconnaissance around the park to get a feel for what's going on. Unfortunately, there was an error with the audio on the GoPro here, but this was the first find for the evening, a beautiful little Diplodactylus conspicillatus. Super cute. You'll uh, see some stills images later. But um, the really interesting thing about these guys is on this desert country out here, there's lots of little spider burrows in the grass and that's where he lives throughout the day. He finds them abandoned the spider burrows, goes head down and then uses this fat paddle shaped tail to actually block the entrance of the burrow. So as the um, bull ants and things like that don't annoy him throughout the day, I think that's pretty cool. And he's super cute and quite quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll say goodbye. See you, little buddy. second find of the night guys we just uh, pulled up in a great rush for this beautiful eastern spiny tail now it's going to be pretty hard to see in the detail of the GoPro but he's got all these cool little spiny tubercles running all up his back super cool detailed eye blue mouth as well uh, this one's a little male so yeah absolutely stunning find this is actually Mariella's first one ever so we're pretty excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys, driving around. This is find number three. This is a beautiful box pattern gecko. He is really super cute. You can see the Stunning pattern on him. I'm just going to bring the light a little bit closer for Mariella. Look at the detail on that guy. He's got quite a full tummy too. All right, we're going to get some stills now. Line number three. This is the fourth find and I've got to say you, you're witnessing history right now. Um, I'm so, so very happy on the brink of crying actually. This is 
Asper, the Knobtail Gecko. This is a little gecko I wanted to find since I was a little boy and I first opened up my reptile book and saw this. Let's get him back in the light. Come and look at how cool this little guy is. Look how he's got this funny little knobby tail. <laughs> Beautiful big eyes adapt for seeing prey at night. Cool little dragon-like feet. Because he's a terrestrial ground gecko, and he's often burrowing and growing through rocks and things. He doesn't have toe pads like most most geckos. He's got cool little grappling claws for crawling through timber and rocks and things. But how beautiful. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, really, honestly, I've wanted one of these since I was... Like four years old, I reckon. Too young. <laughs> Too young. Yeah. Look at him. He's perfect. Oh my god, look at the little tail. You can see why they call them knob tail. So they're pretty much evolving their tail away. They don't particularly have a need for it. So this is exactly why we came out here. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to jinx myself, but the entire weekend I've been driving around in the hope of finding this. And mother nature has blessed me with what I reckon has to be the most beautiful gecko in Australia, the knob tail. There's a few different species of these guys around Australia. This is the common or central knob tail. And um, he's just perfect. He's just perfect. Wow. As you can see, we've come across this little Rufus Betong. He'd um, been on the side of the road just eating this little tussock of grass when we lit him up in the spotlights. Now they're actually really quite um, approachable. You can actually get way too close to these things for my liking. They should be a lot more frightened. That would save them more from dingoes and predators and things, but they are really far too tame as you can see. Unfortunately, the Rufus Betong was the last thing we found for the evening, but this is us the following day on a random track out the other side of the motorway that went over the railway. We suspect it went out to one of the grazier's properties. All right, guys, we um, saw something crossing the road and it ducked in. There was this bit of dead shrub and it was over this little burrow. Now, I've poured a bit of water down there to see the extent of how far it goes down after feeding a bit of a twig. I've discovered it's about that deep. So we've pulled this water down. A, that helps that when we dig the burrow up a bit, we can um, track the wet line down, if we sort of collapse the burrow a bit. And we've just put some water down and a little head's poked up. I think it's central netted dragon. I'm not too sure right now, but I'm gonna feed a bit more water in. I'm gonna put my hat over and hopefully he comes up. And when I've done that over this burrow, he comes and sits here and I can quickly see the um, comes out, we'll see if we can get our hands on him. Imagine that is after a little bit of a excavation. He's really good at holding his breath. Yeah. We've got this beautiful little dragon. I think this is what we missed on the side of the road down there not so long ago. Anyway. No. This is, I'm pretty sure central netted dragon, just a juvenile. So he's not got the the rusty red head yet but um, yeah we'll, we'll do some photos and just double check that this is central netted dragon not one of the other dwarf species perhaps and um, yeah find uh, number one dragon for the weekend we have scoured the bush and not seen many dragons and it's really good habitat we thought yesterday it was lunchtime maybe it's too hot maybe they're not out our timing's a bit wrong, but this guy's just proved it's wrong. He was out just basking on the side of the road here, and it was blistering hot under the Queensland sun in the middle of the day, and he's not at all phased. Beautiful dragon. Look at that. The 
deep in our room. Guys, we're driving along. We've just found another little dragon. He's sat just on top of this bird uh, with a tree stump. And as I've approached him, he's just stuck down behind this burnt log and he's going to have gone into probably a small burrow or he's just hiding down there. So we're going to quickly creep over and see if we can't sort of ambush this guy. He's just the other side of this log here. So, Mariella, let's go around that way. Did you see him? No, no, no. No. How big is it? Oh, he's only small. Okay. I definitely didn't see him coming out. Oh, that's it. It's so, so hot. Huh. Alright. So this is Nobby Dragon. He's pretty common, so we won't chase him too much. He's a cool little dragon, mate. Hey. Look at the little dragon. This it's beautiful, beautiful tail pattern. gives them really good balance across the sand. They get up on their two rear legs and use their tail almost as like a rudder to assist their ability to run across the sand. And when it gets really hot in the middle of the day, you'll see him curl this tail right up overhead like this. And he'll he'll go one one hand and one foot. One hand and one foot on the hot sand. As, as he's running around, it's because this sand's probably 50, 60 degrees right now. It's really hot. And even though they're ectotherms, they're obviously reptiles, they're cold blooded, and they like all these hot spots, in the middle of the day, it starts to get way too hot. And so they need to reduce their surface area so he'll stand on, you know, one hand, one foot, as I was saying. And it's just really cool. These guys are quite um, tameable. Like if we were to find a nice grasshopper in the grass here and present him that option of feeding that, he will, even though we've caught him and we've handled him, he'll still eat that prey. Just the, they're really cool little characters, actually. Long tail dragon. Cool. Woohoo! Driving again. Another little dragon's just come off the top of this log and he's gone in here somewhere, so we're going to see if we can find out who it was. Probably just another little knobby. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a little burrow here. So maybe it's another central netted dragon. You can see his perch just in his little hole. Now, before the internet starts on fire, I'd like to say these guys keep many burrows in their territory. So we're always careful to find another to release it in so it's safe and happy in this little home. This is us now setting off to Saw Pit Gorge, which is one of the highlights of the national park here. We're doing a bit of a recce. There's some really interesting territory all through here. There's this cool coffee rock. So we're going to do reconnaissance out through the night and spotlight all through this territory. Hopefully we get some new species crawling out of this stuff. So after crawling through the barbed wire fence, I discovered this little guy on the side of the road. At first I didn't know what it was, so I had to refer to the book and I discovered that it was a little Rinchadura ornata, uh, the western beaked gecko, a new species for me, so I was 
pretty happy, obviously. Uh, it was a bit hard to convince Mariella to get out of the car to come see it, though. She was tired at that point in the evening. All right, Nature Nutters, this is another awesome evening's find. We're at night two, and we're just leaving the campsite. We've done a little bit of driving at another spot, and it proved to be pretty unproductive. Well, we've just come out the campsite to head off to our second point, and we found the Australian coral snake. This is a really spectacular Australian snake. So I've uh, stuffed the box over the top of him just to stop him from freaking out a little bit, so as we had some time to set up. Um, they're, they're reasonably venomous and um, thankfully just short rear fang snake. But I just want to show you this guy. Look at this beautiful snake. I can see why they refer to them as the Australian coral snake. Quite a small head up front. Beautiful banding throughout. Nice big rich banding through the head. Yeah, this is a real trophy find. I'm super excited. This is my first ever coral snake, so super excited. Another top find. Um, really happy. Great colour. Great specimen. Woohoo! So we've just pulled up another beautiful little box gecko here he's got some lovely little light pattern running all the way down his back here super cute really pretty eyes as well cool little sort of bronzy brass colored eyes really good behind the macro lens so uh, Nature Nutters, another beautiful find here. We're spotlighting. We've come down the road a bit more across all this beautiful red uh, sand. Seems to be really, really popular with the geckos at night. I don't know what it is about this stuff, but the geckos love it. Here's a beautiful little eastern stone gecko. He's got a beautiful caramel pinstripe forming a bit of a zigzag pattern down his tail, as you can see there. Hopefully, he's uh, quite a little character. You're pretty quick when he wants to be too. So uh, another really beautiful find out here at White's Mountain in central Queensland. This place is just dishing up so much fantastic stuff. If you're coming out this way, I highly recommend White's Mountain National Park. Alright, so at this point of the evening, unfortunately, our GoPro had run out of batteries, so we proceeded home, and this is a few of the little treats that we got on the way home. Um, it was the end of a fantastic trip, unfortunately. The following morning, uh, we had to return home, so if you're ever in the central Queensland area, I recommend you go see White Mountain. Well, my fellow Nature Nutters, that's it for Brother Nature's first ever episode. I certainly hope we earned your like and subscribe today. There will be plenty more in the future, so stay tuned and thanks very much.